So I've had a few days with iPhone 15 Pro and it seems like it's a lot of little changes that add up to just an overall better experience. Starting with the design, it's been refined so the edges are a little more rounded and it just feels more comfortable to hold. It kind of feels like the phone is a single solid piece rather than, you know, like the distinct front, back, and side rails that they had on the 14 Pro. And speaking of the side rails, these are now brushed titanium bonded to the inner aluminum frame. And aesthetics wise, I think this looks really good. Um, I prefer it the more matte and brushed look over the shiny and polished steel. Also, the new titanium combined with those rounded edges just helps the phone feel softer, more like natural and organic as opposed to a harsh edges piece of tech, if that makes sense. And I ended up going with the blue titanium, which I think was a really good choice. I had a chance to check out the rest of the colors in person and this just looked really good. I did like the black too, but the blue reacts really well to different environments. I am concerned about scratches though, so unfortunately I am using a case. I just know that once some of the natural titanium underneath the blue starts to show, it's just gonna be such a distinct contrast. It'll draw a lot of my attention. And kind of adjacent to the design and getting more into the actual features of this phone, Apple did swap out two things. First up was the mute switch. This got replaced with the action button. And I mean, this is a really welcome change, at least for me, right? Like my phone's been on silent for for years at this point. I don't, I, I'm, I honestly haven't heard my phone make a noise in quite some time. So I'd rather have something that I can customize to fit how I wanna use my device. And they actually made it pretty customizable. By default, it just mutes and unmutes the phone, but you can map it to pretty much anything. There's this really cool UI in the settings that doesn't seem to match anything else. So you can choose between muting, opening the camera, turning on the flashlight, starting to record a voice note. Uh, but I think my favorite one that lets you do pretty much anything is running a Siri shortcut. I've tried a couple different things with the Tesla app, starting a Pomodoro timer, and even adjusting some of the stuff around my house using HomeKit. For now, I've landed on just opening my camera so I could just easily take pictures and record videos when I need them. But I think this is definitely gonna change on a regular basis depending on, you know, what cool shortcuts I've seen or what new thing I wanna do that week. And the second change was that lightning got replaced by USB-C across the lineup. The standard 15 and 15 plus are limited to USB 2.0 speeds, but with the A17 Pro, which, which I'll get to, the Pro and Pro Max can go up to USB 3.0 speeds and connect to a variety of accessories. Just being able to like transfer data faster to get videos or photos off your phone onto your computer is gonna be so nice. I've tested external SSDs, keyboards, monitors, the X-Real AR glasses, and also just plug it into other devices so I could use my 15 Pro as a battery bank. And I just love how flexible the USB-C port is. Like just in the first few days, I've gotten to do a lot of fun stuff that I wasn't able to do before. And I think creators are gonna benefit the most from this, right? Like you can shoot on the iPhone internally, or you can just shoot ProRes straight to an SSD and then edit right off that. You can then edit on your iPhone if you want to. And if the screen is too small or you need some extra extra peripherals, you can always plug into a monitor with a keyboard and a mouse. And it's just like the perfect little portable studio. But going back to the A17 Pro, this is actually a three nanometer processor, which is a first for a smartphone. And it has a faster neural engine, harder accelerated ray tracing for better graphics, and a faster GPU that can run full console games like Assassin's Creed, Death Stranding, and Resident Evil. And given that it's such a powerful chip, it does get a little bit warm. Um, but I will say I only had it happen back when I was first setting up my phone and transferring all the data, and it's been fine since then. But I wanna do some more testing to see if it heats up again during more like strenuous load. I do feel like there's a lot of potential on the software side to do a lot with this phone. Overall, the iPhone 15 Pro seems like a solid upgrade with a bunch of little changes that make it better day to day. But these are just some of my initial thoughts after the first few days. Like I didn't even get to testing out the camera that much. So be sure to subscribe down below for the full review and other videos about tech, cameras, and making. Here's a video about an AR monocle. And here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.